Now, I was going to end, and I know uh, dinner's here, but I have to say one more piece because I feel like I'm directed to do so. When we were in prison, my father had a dream. And we had, we had many dreams, just so you know. They were so great because they kept us going. <laughs> the Lord, it was so difficult, but the Lord was so good to us. I mean, he would, about the time we just couldn't do it anymore, he'd give us a dream or he would give one, one of the other people a dream and we'd share it with each other, write letters to each other, or we would tell it to our wives and our wives would tell it to our brothers or friends' wives and they would tell it to us. And it, it was a beautiful thing. But my father had a, a dream. And it's hard to, it's hard to, it's, sometimes it's hard to explain your own dreams. But it's even harder to explain somebody else's dream. So I'm just going to try to do the best I can. And he was in this, you know, kind of this darkness and this, there was a lot of people and kind of a little bit of a chaos. There was a large building, uh, kind of, you know, he kind of explained it as a great and spacious building. And he was caught in that. And I'm not sure if we were with him or what, but he was caught in that. And others were caught in it too. And what they were doing is they were uh, in this building. They were going to this building to try to get like relief or you know, and in this building was the golden calf. And they were going into this building and like, kind of like worshiping or putting their faith in this golden calf. And, and he was seeing this and kind of had this choice of to do that or not, to try to, because that, you know, it was kind of the, and, and I know I'm paraphrasing really bad and I have to apologize to my father. Sometimes I'll have to tell you the, the actual dream himself, but but that was, that was basically what was happening. And he felt, and ultimately, uh, after, I don't know if it was during the dream or after the dream, he began to understand it more. And he began to understand that, that the golden calf was the, the, the court systems. And, and that pe people were running you know, they had this, this pain and this need for relief and they were running to this building and to this golden calf trying to get relief, putting their faith that that is what was going to relieve them. Like hoping that, the, that it would be what would relieve, relieve them. And they were not getting relief. And my, my father's understanding was that that was not where you were going to get your relief. You can't worship the golden calf. You have to have faith in God. He will be the one that will relieve you. It will be Christ who will relieve you. And, and, this, and that's literally what we saw and experienced. And what I see is that many, many times, many, over and over, even someone, even people very close to me, I even get tempted. That whenever there's a trouble, whenever my rights are infringed upon or I feel like they're, they're being taken, I want to go hire a lawyer. And I want to run to the golden calf and, and put my faith there. And I, I tell you now, very clearly, that that is not where your rights are secured. That is not where your liberty is secured. Your liberty and your rights are secured on the very, you know, place that they were established. When someone comes to threaten your family, you stand in defense of your family and you call upon God to help you. And whatever circumstance is. Because history has proven, especially in our last several decades, that no rights are being preserved in the courts. In fact, they're being taken there. Because what happens is this, is we have a hope that, let's say someone comes, it doesn't matter whether it's a federal agency or whether it's an individual, come to take your, our rights away. And then what do we do? We hire an attorney and we run up to a judge and we say, judge, judge, 
will you please grant me the rights that I already have? Yeah. And the judge may go, he may, he may very, very well be part of this, most likely is, part of this conspiracy. Now, do you think he's going to preserve your rights? No. But what you did is you allowed him to make the decision of whether you're going to preserve your own, or whether you're going to be able to have your rights or not. You, you gave them up. You, you literally gave them up by running to the courts and running to a judge and say, you make the decision, judge, of whether I own these rights or not. No. When you know for certain that you, those are your rights, you do not allow them to be questioned. And I know that that's a, that's a strong thing I'm saying. But when you do that, then your friends need to come and protect you also. And it's a duty of ours to do that. When we see somebody that is standing up for their rights, and we see that it is their rights, and we see that there's a combination forming to take those rights, it is our duty, each one of our duty, to go and to defend our neighbor. Nothing strikes fear into the hearts of the corrupt in Utah like the name Defending Utah. From our exclusive investigative reports to our unparalleled activism and our number one viewed YouTube channel, DefendingUtah.org is where the liberty-minded look to and the establishment fears. We invite you to take the next step in defending liberty by joining Defending Utah today. For a limited time, we are giving away your choice of a free two or four day weapons training course at the World Class Front Sight Firearms Training Center when you sign up to be a supporting member at DefendingUtah.org. Just click on the membership tab at DefendingUtah.org and become a supporting member today for your free course and tune in to K Talk AM 1640 every Saturday at 1 p.m. for the Defending Utah radio program. Think right and wrong not right and left.